Fandom Nomads, episode 122. Trying to get your ideas across to developers is like speaking another language because they, uh, and you need to learn a whole new language uh, to write a decent scope properly. So things that you take for granted won't get done unless you're very, very specific. Hello, Nomad Nation. Welcome to Tandem Nomads, the podcast show and entrepreneurship platform where you can find great inspiration and tips to build and grow a successful portable business and thrive in your global nomadic life. Today's episode is all about how to embrace technology to be able to make your business portable and specifically how to start working in a business that's tech-based when you have no idea of technology and when you don't even code. And to talk about that, I have a very, really great guest here. Her name is Nicole Blight. And Nicole, are you ready for the ride? I am so excited. It's such an honor to be here and I look forward to it. I'm excited. Fabulous. So good to have you here, Nicole. I've been watching your journey and really impressed by everything you've been putting out there. And Nomad Nation, I know that it's really not easy sometimes to get out of our comfort zone and to embrace technology. But if you have been listening to Tandem Nomads for a while, you should know that I truly believe in the power of embracing technology because that's the one tool that will help you really make your your business truly portable. And um, it also helps you think about different kinds of business models to be able to develop ideas that are usually more local, but you could actually make them based online and based on technology. So Nomad Nation, this episode is going to be full of resources. We're going to mention lots of tools. We're going to mention lots of uh, advice on how to make sure to embrace technology, but also all the resources that can make it easier for you when you want to launch a tech-based business or business model. So in order to help you keep all this information in one place, you can go to tandemnomads.com slash 122 and download the free guidebook I've prepared for you. And by the way, I will also add in this free resource some more information that we don't cover in this episode that I think is really important to understand before you launch your business idea, such as how you can test your idea before you launch it. So make sure to check it out, tandemnomads.com slash 122. And here we have Nicole Blyde, who is the founder of Relocate Guru, which is a great app and a, and a social network designed to share local tips and connect with the community before you arrive abroad. And I really, really recommend you to check it out. If you are moving on a regular basis, this app is, the, is designed for you. It's called Relocate Guru. So after moving 16 times in her life, Nicole found it even more difficult when moving with a toddler for her husband's job and wonder why it takes so long to organize a move and feel at home with all the technology we already have available. So she dropped her career as a massage therapist, went back to university and got a master's in international marketing management. After And after winning several competitions and grants, she decided to go on to our accelerator programs and started the startup to cr and created Relocate Guru, which is an app that you can find now on App Store and Google Play. So, Nicole, I tried to summarize all this journey that you've been on to from being a massage therapist to, to starting your own startup based on a tech tool, knowing that you had nothing to do with technology before. So tell me, is there anything I missed from this and what is happening right now in your world? Yes, it's been a very long, crazy journey, that's for sure. But if um, your audience knows, sort of like, it generally is kind of a long, crazy journey uh, going from one place to another. And I, yes, I came up with the idea of Relocate Guru because I was moving, as you said, for my husband's job. And I was just like, this is crazy. Like the amount of knowledge I built, built up in six months just got swept away as soon as we moved again and it's like well why can't there be a place to store this information and make it easier for the next person who is moving there um so that they don't have to go through that really long period of feeling lost and alone um so i was sitting on this idea for some time um when we moved back to aberdeen 
there and got my degree, there was an oil downturn. And so that meant all the jobs disappeared. So I couldn't get a job. And so my husband was like, well, you've had this really good idea for a good time, long time. Why don't you get on with it? So that's what I did. And just trying to figure it out one step at a time of like, how do I actually turn this idea into reality? And it's through getting onto uh, accelerator programs and getting some initial grant funding to enable me to um, find developers to turn my idea in my head into an actual real app. So it's been a long journey. It's getting there. And now we're in the process of developing the latest update. So it's, yeah, been a crazy this journey. Is amazing. It's such an amazing. So it sounds like really easy right now, but I do know that you've been through a long journey, like you say, and I would love to start with the beginning. And where did you actually start once you had this idea? What was the first step you took? And could you take us through the different phases? So the first phase is definitely working out exactly what do you want it to do? Like what problem are you trying to solve? Um, the best tools that I was given was called a business model canvas and value proposition canvas to work out sort of like, is this just me that is having this problem or is it a bigger problem that a lot more people need to solve and are they willing to pay for it? And that's a big step a lot of people kind of stumble on because they get so wrapped up in their idea that, oh, everyone needs this, but they haven't figured out who's going to pay for it. Uh, so it's like working out the actual business model and then, yeah, getting started with how to build a website, how to um, then prototype an app and then taking it out for testing and building all that. So I started off with building a website on Wix, um, which is a really easy platform to use if you don't know how to code. Uh, it's just drag and drop. Uh, it's very easy. There's also Squarespace as well, which is very similar. Um, I went and built the, uh, the very first website on WordPress, um, which I put on AWS, which is Amazon Web Services. Uh, and I used a YouTube tutorial to do that. And I did it in one weekend. So if I can build a website in a weekend using a YouTube tutorial, anybody exactly. can. Exactly. <laughs> 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 well, I, I think was, I, I want to pause there because you already shared so many yeah. good tips here and I really want to highlight them. Uh, the first thing here, Nomad Nation, is really about first figuring out what the problem, what is the problem you solve, but also making sure that it's really a problem that, that your, your target audience and who's your target audience, by the way, really needs. So I would really recommend you to sit down and look at, and we'll put the link of the business model Canva there. It's a, it's a great tool. And I would actually put a video tutorial there that will explain you how to use the business, uh, the business um, Canva there, the business model Canva. So check that out if you have a business idea and want to test it out. But I just want to share one thing about that too. You really need to know your audience, who you're targeting, and you really exactly. need to make some market research to be able to do that Canva and fill it properly. So I guess you did that too, Nicole, right? Yes, that was definitely the first step. So um, I put on a splash page and put out a, a questionnaire that I made on Typeform, which was very simple. Like, just to find out whether there was a need for this and gathering the research, like what are the pain points? What are the, the what tools are they currently using uh, to solve this problem? What resources and things are they finding the most useful? Uh, and like, where are the gaps? Where is the gap in the market that I need That's to fill? So getting lots and lots of research and it's, a, and research is a continuous thing. Yeah, it's, it's exactly. I love that you say that never stop doing your research because things evolve. And, and also as you develop your app, you also want to perform it and always start first. We always, I always say start first, perfect later. Don't wait to have the perfect version of what you want to launch because it will never be good enough. <laughs> it will never be good enough. And you want to perfect it with the community you build around your business. So I think that's really important before even we talk about technology, it's important to realize that technology is a tool to help you get there. But before that, you need some really good foundations to make your business succeed. 
And I would also say like you, you need to like not just ask your friends and family. You need to really go to your target audience because and no one wants to tell you that your baby's ugly, you know, like with your business. Like everyone will say it's good and nice and they want to be kind. That is not useful feedback um, because it sends you down a path that isn't actually true. Um, so you need to, the, the best feedback is the people that tell you when things are not quite yeah, right. Exactly. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Nicole. This is so good. And actually I have a, I have a link for you, Nomad Nation. If you are looking to do a survey and do your market research, go to tandemnomads.com slash 105, where I show you exactly how to run a survey. So I'll make sure to put all this information in the show notes of this episode. Um, so check that out. And so you did your research, you figure out the problem you solve, you did the business model Canva and all the basics that are really important at the beginning. And then you said it, you know, you just launched your website on Wix and there's other easy platforms. And what did you do next? I just wanted to start creating content that was useful for the audience. Um, so it's like I knew it was going to take time to build the actual app, the, the product that I wanted. So it was like, well, how can I help the, and serve the people I want to help the most? And so it's like, well, how can I provide useful tools and sort of um, whether it's interviews with experts or a moving checklist or lots of useful resources that could help people or point people in the right direction in the meantime and build up an audience that um, really care about uh, Relocate Guru before it even exists. Mm -hmm. That's really good. That's really fantastic. So, so you did that and, and then you wanted to make it an app. Yes. So I'd always wanted it to be an app and it's like looking back, it's like, maybe that wasn't the best thing to do um, because it, when you can't code, it's really expensive um, and it, it's very challenging and talking, trying to get your ideas across to developers is like speaking another language because they, uh, and you need to learn a whole new language uh, to write a decent scope properly. So things that you take for granted won't get done unless you're very, very specific about every little button and feature that you want to exist. And scopes can go way okay, out. We, we need to talk just... about that a bit deeper, but I want to, I just want to say something we did not say before because you mentioned about how you learned a lot on YouTube. And I'm like, yes. anything you want to learn, you can find it on YouTube. Oh, so yes. I've actually started podcasting on YouTube. <laughs> I learned my own website, how to develop it on YouTube. So this is really great. And I know just by experience that honestly, not everybody can even follow instructions on YouTube. So if you, you know, because technology is really so far, far ahead. So if you feel that way, Nomad Nation, make sure to surround yourself with people who can help you and guide you through the process. But don't give up because once you get into it, you realize it's not that complicated. Uh, it's more about getting started with it. That's the hardest part. I can see with my clients I'm working with, the hardest part is getting to start using tech tools, like for example, WordPress or Wix or just simple platforms like this can be a hurdle, even MailChimp. But if... Um, if you just give it a chance, give it a chance and try to push through it at the beginning. And once you get the first hand of it, the rest is going to be really easy. And I think that's what also helps you be able to search for the information and start talking the language of coders. <laughs> exactly. And, it, and you build that up over time time you start picking up like uh, what css means and javascript and you know what a back-end developer versus a front-end developer but oh like at God, the beginning i was like me? i don't understand what, what you're talking like, what language like, is that are, are you speaking german or what <laughs> like you know it's like, i have no idea what you're talking about and it's really overwhelming at the beginning so it's okay that it's overwhelming like it's that's normal it's like if you're moving to japan and you're having to learn japanese like give yourself a break um find someone who does no tech like if you are um connected to a university like go and speak to their computer science department or um 
yeah, find a mentor who works for a startup who, who likes coding or something like that, that can give you a lowdown of what these things yeah. mean. Um, because yeah, like when first some, somebody tells you sort of like, oh, just host your WordPress site on a AWS free tier server. And it's like, pardon what, like go back <laughs> like 300 stuff. And it's like, the, but once uh, you figure yeah. it out, it's like, it's actually not that difficult. Yeah. And when I started doing it, I was like, uh, and I was like, oh, is that it? It's like, why is everyone making such a big deal about it? It's only like, da, 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 da. it's like people like build up in their heads that it's more complicated yeah, than it actually is. Exactly. Yeah. So it is, it is more simple than we think. It's just about getting the first hand of it. And, you know, yeah. I'm going to, I can read and, and hear already some of our listeners because I, I'm starting to know, you know, Mad Nation. Some of you are maybe, about 40, about 50, and are saying, yeah, but you two are so young, it's easy for you. And you know what? To just answer to that, I'm going to ask you to go to the show notes of this episode, and I will link the uh, interview I did with a woman who started her startup at the age of 50. So it explains the same thing. So it's not a matter of age. I just want to bring that up. And there are people who start their own startup as at 50, so it's never too late, and I'm going to share that with you. Uh, in the show notes that interview but okay so let's now try to be let's try to figure out how we can help now more practically to know how to start you know embracing that language of coding and how to speak to coders so first of all where how did you find your coders so I connected with my coders uh, the developers through um, various accelerators that I got accepted on and uh, there was sitting at my table because they were doing tech startups as well so um i was like hey do you know anyone that they could help um and and they put me in touch with people that they knew were good or uh, other people who were doing startups they knew to different developers that were doing and um, they're having their own agency or freelancers um around so it was through definitely word of mouth and contacts through networking okay was where I got them. that's really good so actually we will talk in a bit about the platforms where you can connect with people to you know to f meet with other startups <laughs> and the startup e ecosystem somehow so we'll talk about that but let's talk now essentially more about your experience with the coders I I've been following your journey through that so that was full of hurdles but also learning lessons so what would you share about your challenges that you had working with coders and what would you advise for anyone who starts doing that um yeah so uh, it is a big steep learning curve sort of like if you've never worked with developers before to start working with them um some of my friends have got really lucky early on and found an amazing team um that delivered amazingly like i've had a bit more of a rockier experience and i and I need to take ownership of that because it's that I was maybe not clear enough because I wasn't speaking their right language because I didn't know better. So that uh, was a big learning challenge of like knowing how um, to project manage and how to work with uh, developers in their language of what what they mean when they say certain things like uh at the beginning they will it's like dealing with builders building a house or like doing some work on your house they will promise you the world that they can build everything but then when you it's like building a house and then you get to the end of the house it's like but where are the windows mm -hmm. and where it's like well that wasn't in the scope so <laughs> you don't have those yeah. things so uh, it's being really cr crystal clear about exactly what. So you if you had to do it again, what? how would you do that? Is there like a place where we can learn to write a proper brief and think about all the aspects that we have to think to brief um, a coder or an agency? I haven't come across one yet because everyone seems to do their um, briefs and scopes a bit differently. Mm -hmm. um, Ideally, you want to sort of partner with someone who could be your CTO from the start. CTO stands um, for? Yeah. For Chief Technology exactly. Officer. Yeah. Uh, so this is the person who is going to ideally be building your um, platform and taking care of all the technical aspects so you can focus on the business side. Um, however, yeah, 
that I haven't found my dream CTO yet. It's uh, um, because there are so many projects out there, they can have their pick. Mm. They can just work. Developers like working on challenges and solving problems. That's what they love. Uh, And so finding the right person when they've got millions of other things that they could potentially work on is hard to find. Uh, So just to talk about that a bit, um, by the way, that's a big opportunity I see here for expert partners who want to build a portable business. If you're familiar with coding or want to get into it, that will bring you lots of business because there's such a big need right now for coders. So think about it, just dropping your brain right there. Yeah. Um, and you can find uh, like Upwork and places like that are great places to find developers. Exactly. But it's definitely a place to um, do your research thoroughly first. Okay. So what would you now, learning based on your learning experience, what would you really advice to be careful on when you brief or create a scope of, of, um, of work for, with a, with a coder. Be super specific, like down to how you want, uh, your users to interact with your apps of like every button. What do you expect to happen at every touch point throughout the whole experience? What should come up? Like what should the, um, experience before your users that you got to go through everything don't just assume that or oh, because that's on every other app that it will be on your platform you've got to be very mm. specific so i would say it would be good to sit down and actually sketch every interaction that you expect and every button yes. where it leads and what it generates yes i think it would be- and there's some great tools for that um there's adobe xd which you can get download for free um, there is uh, Proto.io, which uh, is this another prototyping tool, and there's Envision. Okay, fantastic. These are great well. tools. I'm going to put them in the show notes in the page for you to start sketching and preparing before briefing. So Adobe, Adobe XD, Proto.io, and Envision. These are great tools. Thank you. And they come up with, uh, so they have some templates in their libraries so that you can get started um, with the templates to, and with, that you can tweak to your own That's design. That's super cool. And is there already some apps that actually help you build an app? I've heard about that, but I'm not sure that's like... I have heard of them, but I haven't used them before. Okay. Um, so I don't know much about okay. them. I think it's very early. St- I did hear of someone trying to create a platform that would build an app like a mm-hmm. WordPress that you could just sort of like tweak and stuff. Um, but it is a lot more complicated doing, especially if you want to do a hybrid app that does um, iOS and Android. Mm, definitely. But maybe it could be used as a prototype. Oh, yeah. totally. Yes. Um, but the, the prototyping tools that I su- I've just suggested, that's where you, c- that's the front end. So what people see is the front end. Oh. And the back end is all the databases and the content that then comes through. Fantastic. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much. That's really great tool. So we will share that in the show notes, Nomad Nation. And uh, let's go now more to the how you got the funding to be able to do it. Because as you said, there is an investment to put in. So before you invest that money, first of all, really important, I can't insist enough, do your research, do your work before you start putting money in and get some traction before you need to get to test your prototype a little bit before you start investing in an app or something like that. That's really important. You want to have a bit of traction and build a bit of an audience so that when you launch, you have people there to support you for your launch. So that's my first tip here for you. But now that you are, have tested it, you're sure that you want to do it and there's, uh, there's big chances that it's viable. There's a whole plat ecosystem for startups based on tech to support you grow. And Nicole, you have been doing an amazing job at taking full advantage of it. So I want to separate a little bit the places where you can get funding and the places where you can get mentorship. So start with the funding, maybe. Where are the places where you started getting some funding? So the first, because I just graduated from the university, there were some funding opportunities for students to um, start up their own businesses. So it was applying for grant funding from 
uh, in Scotland it was Scottish Institute of Enterprise, SIE, and at the time it was Enterprise Campus as well. Um, there was, uh, and so those were where I got my first kind of initial bits of seed funding mm -hmm. um, from those grants. Grant funding is a great way to get started to help build like a prototype so that with, without having to dilute with investment and equity mm -hmm. and things like that. Exactly. So let's talk about that a little bit. That's a very good point that you make here, Nicole. There's a difference between getting a grant and getting, you know, um, like how would I say, uh, investors. That's two different things. Yes. So if you get an investor, you will have to give away some of your capital, some of your equity. And the more you grow, the more that equity will grow. And the more investors you have, the less you will have margin to be able to get more investors. So the biggest advice here is to avoid having investors from the beginning and start getting investors more uh, as you start getting some traction. So for that solution, you have the grants that Nicole mentioned. I'm, did I summarize it well here, Nicole? Um, yeah, different people start in different ways. Um, but yeah, I would definitely say finding what grant funding ava is available at the beginning is a great way to get started because it also gives confidence to investors that uh, your idea has some merit. If somebody is willing to give you money for free, then there must be something mm. to it. Um, so, it, it, and then it's like, how can you turn that money into, into something of value? Uh, and it's then proving that, um, which then helps to show investors that to take you seriously. Oh, fantastic. So in terms of funding, can you tell us in terms of percentages, how much you funded your, like from your own pocket, how much it comes from funding or, or other sources? Just trying to add it up in my head. Um, so about 50-50 so yeah. far. So about 50% grant funding and um, about 50% This is great. This finance. is fantastic. So think about that nomination. Make some online research in the areas where you are if there are some grants that are offered to startups. And okay, and then there is a whole platform of accelerators and, and incubators. There's it's hundreds. Like endless. hundreds <laughs> There's loads and some provide funding as well. Um, like, uh, especially in America, like we, you've got big ones like Techstars and Y Combinator. Um, I would definitely recommend everyone to go on to the Y Combinator summer school. They have like free resources of videos there um, to get lots of knowledge. Um, and uh, I love the story of like how WhatsApp was created by a guy who was um, an expat. So wow, that's, that's a good one. cool. Love. Okay. Um, so that's, that's a good one to listen to. And um, yeah, so those ones provide, give you a good amount of seed funding of like around $120,000, um, which sounds a lot of money, but good disappears quite fast. Um, especially in the U S because the average salary for a developer is around $70,000. Mm -hmm. So it, it can go very yeah. fast. And uh, th so those are good, but they take equity. Mm. So the equity can vary depending on where you go to um, like textiles, for example, I think they take about 6% equity and, but you can buy that back if you do better than that. Uh, other places that I went to, like in the UK, that we've got Entrepreneurial Spark, which is more of a mentorship-led um, incubator, and that's run by the Royal Bank of Scotland. Uh, there's also other government ones like Elevator, and that's mentorship as well. So if you are, um, I would definitely be very wary of any incubators that ask you to pay mm. them. Okay. I would avoid those. Okay. So, okay. So that, these are really, really good tips. So there's so many different tips here that are really good. So Nomad Nation, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a folder with all this information and you go to tandemnomads.com slash 122 and you'll be able to download that so that we can organize them in categories because there's so much here to learn and we'll share that. So some of the platforms are Techstars that you mentioned, Y Com uh, Combinator, Summer School, um, there's a lot of them, but these are the two main ones, um, but they do add take equity. Is there anyone that you have been using 
uh, that you found interesting and that hell has what, what is the platform that has helped you most um the, the, a place to go to search sort of like if where there's a lot of um where there's the nearest accelerator program to you is uh f6s and gan g-a-n those two websites you'll be able to search and find um, pretty much any accelerator around the world and find the one that is right for your um, specific um, market okay. that, that you are working okay, on. Okay, fantastic. But how, how about you? Where is the place where you found most support? The most support, it, it varies. I um, think because it goes through different mm -hmm. stages, like at uh, different stages of your business, you need different exactly. things. So... Um, at the very, very beginning on the very first accelerator I went on at Elevator was fantastic because we were all at the same stage and we were really supportive of each other and um, still keep in touch with a lot of them. So that was good to build up, help building up a network. Um, the second one I went on at Elevator was amazing, uh, not Elevator, sorry, um, eSpark. That was amazing for helping to um, develop confidence with pitching mm -hmm. and I'll, if I usually get I get um, anxiety and sort of almost panic attacks sort of having to stand up on a stage mm -hmm. so going on somewhere like that where you can ha help to build up your confidence and pitching is essential if you're going to be a startup because everything seems to revolve around yes. pitching at the moment um, so just to explain for those who are not familiar yeah. pitching is about having Mostly, most of the time is like 60 seconds to present your business idea. And then in front of you, you have a bunch of juries or most of them are investors who will give you feedback about your idea and eventually invest if they're interested. Uh, yeah, it depends on where you yeah. go, but it's like between one minute or up to five yeah. minutes, depending on the, the, th the, the style of the, com the format. Um, and it's like whoever can basically present with the most confidence that their business idea is really good will get some form of money at yeah. the end of the day. Okay, fantastic. Well, these are some, we covered a lot of things here, but I would cover it in three bases. If you're looking at building a portable business that's based on technology, phrase one, make sure to make your research define your business model Canva and do your survey and everything. Second step is finding the technology, starting with baby steps. You can start with a simple website. It doesn't have to be a whole app. Start getting traction, building your mailing list, creating a, you know, a bit of a presence, and then you can start looking for coders. And Nicole shared some great in tips there. But once you have your coders, you're going to have to have more and more investments coming in. And that's what you need some money to be able to invest in the technology. And Nicole shared some great tips there. So these are some of the steps here if you want to build a tech-based business. And Nicole, I would love you to share with us what is your biggest advice for whoever wants to start this journey? So my biggest advice is to start with a problem that you really care about. Like there's going to be some really tough days uh, on the road ahead. And if you don't, you need something that, want, that you want to get out of bed for, that you, a problem that you need to fix with such a passion that you'll battle through no matter what. So stick with that. So focus on the problem that you really want to solve in the world. That's wonderful. I cannot, I cannot agree with you so much. More than that. And you actually, you are really trying to solve a big problem for our expat community. And I really recommend to check that out. Relocate Guru. Actually, I would, maybe you want to summarize a little bit how it works so that we really understand how we can take benefit of that. Sure. It's, um, if you know how to use Instagram or Pinterest, you'll figure it out in no problem, in no time at all. It's that you, um, take a photo of somewhere that you would recommend to a friend. You could reuse your Instagram photos, post it into the app with a description and where it's um, located and share and connect with friends, put things, but you can organize things into folders so that um, for your different cities so that you can find them again when you get, uh, when you get there. Uh, and it's a place to connect uh, with like-minded people and to, 
yeah um, make moving a lot easier and to find which neighborhood is best for you this is amazing so it's basically an app where you can find information on every city you go to and but you can also post your own tips so it's a it's a community based app where you share information with each other so if you are all of you here have some great tips to share so go to relocate guru and put in whatever recommendations you have in terms of schools in terms of doctors shops whatever we need to be able to be in, installed in new city and use it if you're looking for recommendations and we can't wait to see your new app. once you we sign up i guess it's automatic that we get the update right yes the update is coming very soon based on all the feedback that we've had from the initial uh, app um, we're making some big changes and so i'm very excited to for the update that is coming very very this soon so um, but it does rely on and the community sharing their best local tips. So it's only as good as the community that's in there helping each other to feel like they belong. Yes, so good. So this is really great. So Nomad Nation, make sure to check it out. And I'm sure you, you will find great tips there. We look at Guru. So Nomad Nation, I have created a great guide for you that's called The Three Steps to Launch Your Startup when you're not tech savvy. So I summarize those three steps for you and insert in each step the resources that we have mentioned all along this episode. So in order to download your free guide, you go to tandemnomads.com slash 122. Nicole, thank you so much for your great inspiration and thank you for sharing with us your experience. It was so lovely. It's my absolute pleasure. I hope it's been helpful for the t Nomad community. Yes, I'm sure it was. So Nomad Nation, share your comments and let us know how it went for you. And as usual, make sure to turn all your challenges into real opportunities.